there. Hello, everybody, and welcome to The Seventh Rule with Sirach Lofton. Hello, hello. This is one of our very special CNF videos uh, with Mr. Kenneth Alexander Mitchell. hey -o. Wait a minute. Did you, it was, you said it was the second, right? Oh, come on. The third. <laughs> the third. The third. Yeah, that's why I didn't say it. I was like, did he say the second or the third? <laughs> okay. And we're also joined by a very special guest, Melissa Longo. Oh. <laughs> Hi, Melissa. Hi, Kenny. Where are you? I see you have a fancy background. Where Where are you? Well, I'm at home, but this is where I want to be. <laughs> Riza. 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 There we go. Yeah. <laughs> So once again, Kenneth Alexander Mitchell the third. There we go. I'll just dub <laughs> that in later. <laughs> With like an echo reverb. Third, 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 <laughs> third, third, third. So first off, I just want to say I see you're wearing the uh, 50th anniversary hat. Um, I feel like Discovery probably came out right on the 50th anniversary, right? Is that? Yeah, I remember. I remember getting this hat at the 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 Rottenbury um, uh, booth at the Vegas convention. Mm. Yeah, three three years ago. Were you a Star Trek fan uh, before you were cast, or was this all, like, new to you? Well, it wasn't new per se, but, <clears throat> um, you know, I watched, I grew up watching Next Generation, D Space Nine, um, and some syndication of TOS. I wouldn't say that I was a Trekkie per se, but um, when I did get cast, I I um, hired my friend uh, Sam Whitwer, who is a Trekkie, and uh, he kind of took me down the road of all Klingon-esque episodes and wow. the ones he thought were important for me to watch and a couple of books. Um, so I guess I would say that I'm a Trekkie now. He tutored you. <laughs> he sure did. Yeah. yeah, no, he it was amazing the passion he had for um Star Trek and um it was quite infectious. So it was it was a little bit my first parlay into into the world and to the passion that the Trekkies have for for the show and this world. Um, you know, and it's been an amazing ride since. Mm. Yeah, yeah. Uh, sorry, what were you going to say, Sirach? I was going to say, I remember the first time when um, he came in, it was at the convention, and, you know, everybody was saying, oh, those are the new guys, you know. Yeah. They're the new, they're the new cast. <laughs> they're, the ones, they're the ones bringing back the Star Trek uh, television franchise. So um, I just gravitated towards you um, because I thought, you, you know, you're just such a nice guy. And you just radiate such this like come and talk to me and friendly attitudes. Um, it's because I had a cool pair of shoes on. It, it, <laughs> well, yeah, it's, it was the shoes. It's also the uh, it's the, uh, the five o'clock. You know the gruff. The, the beard, gruff, yeah, man. I gruff. appreciate it. I I feel the same about you and and also Aaron. He was one of the very first people that I met too, and. Um, we were so welcomed in the family. I'll, ne I'll never forget that. Yeah. I was scared shitless. I had never done a convention before. And uh -oh. to be thrown right into the, the biggest one in the world was, uh, was pretty crazy. Were you initially pleasantly surprised or overwhelmed? Uh, I was pleasantly surprised, but I, I, I went a day early and I remember my friend, um, Ted, he took me around to show me the actual hall that we will be speaking on our at our panel. Mm -hmm. It's like seven thousand empty seats, and I I was uh, I was overwhelmed for sure. I was a little nervous about what we were getting into and representing the new show. It was myself, Mary Chifo, uh, Wilson Cruz, and Sam, I believe. Uh, were there from the cast mm. that first go around and the show hadn't aired yet. So, you know, there's a lot of expectations um, and pressure, but I feel like we handled ourselves well and represented the show as best we could given the circumstances. But I do remember leaving 
the convention thinking how amazing this world was and how proud I was to be a part of it and how great the fans were, but all, but, you know, almost more importantly, how awesome the rest of the, the cast were from the previous shows. You could really see a bond there. Um, mm, you know, yeah. a lot, a lot of you guys have been doing the circuit for, for a long time and, and keeping the entity of the show going and, you know, discovery was lucky to have that platform to be launched off of to have that energy there um so i know i always remain grateful for that i never lose sight of that yeah absolutely uh Ciroc, when you so when you're saying when you first saw the the new actors uh yeah. you you were initially like like happy to see them or was there like a second like who are the who are these new guys stepping on our no, on our no. turf? Well, first of all, you know the television franchise of Star Trek had been pretty much uh, terminated, right? And so there weren't any more new series coming out for a while. And the fact that you guys were going to break the ice and bring it back and that was something that I was excited about, and because it would bring more interest into the show and to the franchise. So I was excited about that. But most importantly for me, I wanted to introduce myself to you guys because I felt like that you were the new people in this group that we were already, you know, we had already had this machine rolling for years. And I wanted to make sure that you were extended that invitation and welcomed into the, the family as, you know, you guys are going to be doing this for a while. We're going to be seeing each other for a while. Yeah. So. I wanted to make sure that, you know, there was a proper introduction and you guys were like so down to earth and, you know, just really humble about taking on the, the task of, of, of relaunching the brand. Humble and a little bit naive, but I think naivete is good sometimes in a situation like that. And yeah, yeah I, all the things you expressed, I felt that I felt that from you and from the rest of the cast. Um, so we are quite lucky that, to have that introduction and with the open arms. I definitely, are, uh, sorry. Go immediately ahead. Um, wrapped in a, a blanket of Star Trek love. Mm. <laughs> yeah. Get used to it. That's all, <laughs> that's how it is. It's pretty cool. I, I do remember what, what Starok's saying, how you, when you first showed up, you were just kind of like, just a, a bundle of positivity. I also remember that with Mary Chifo as well, where you guys showed up and, and faced it head on. Like, here I am. This is a great uh, franchise, and I'm happy to be a part. Of it. it seemed like you really embraced it, like very clearly, um, and, and that was that was evident. Uh, and I wanted to ask, actually, and Melissa as well. Do you remember when you first? saw you know kenneth and maybe others and and how you and aaron uh maybe reacted to it or what you guys thought yeah no i know that aaron was very excited right to embrace the newcomers and welcome them to the family and and um armin being a mentor to him always was the ambassador to the set welcoming guest stars um and he very much wanted to embody that and, you know, have newcomers welcomed in the way that he felt welcomed on Deep Space Nine. So I know that he was very excited to meet everyone. And then meeting Kenneth, he was like, oh, he's so great. Yeah. What a, a great human being. So, yeah, we were we were loved. I know. I remember in in Birmingham, the Discovery photo shoot was for one of the ones that we jumped into together. That we were like, "Oh, we, we got to get this. We got to get in on this." So that doesn't sound like Aaron at all. Jumping into a, somebody else's. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> so, but yeah. So, oh yeah, we were very excited to meet everyone and and happy to find that they were all so wonderful and welcoming and, and such a, a joy to be around in, such, in those settings. So it's nice. 
No. And I, I remember Aaron talking about it too. He's like, man, I love Ken. And he's so yeah. awesome. And yeah. he's just, uh, I, I gave him, you know, I gave him a flyer. He said he's going to do the show. Like, he was so, he, he loved talking yeah. with you guys. And uh, uh, I remember when he said, I met Burnham. I met Burnham for the first time. Oh my gosh. And he was excited about that. So. And he gave her a DVD, right? <laughs> you know, I talked yeah. about that, that DVD. Yeah. 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 So, you know, yeah, I mean, I remember that it, it meant a lot to us that here Aaron was, he was equally excited about our show, if not more than we are, we were. So that, that was really infectious and important for us to feel that he was such an incredible ambassador in welcoming us. And uh, I'll, I'll never forget that and always appreciate that. Yeah. Yeah, and you know, I think I remember that first panel, the one you were talking about. I think, I don't know if somebody prompted you and, and actually asked you, but Kenneth, but I think that you actually did a full-on line or two of call dialogue, right? Like you actually got up and, oh, like, yeah. I mean, and like nailed it. Like you actually like remembered the lines and did the uh, whole thing. Yeah, I mean, that's I think one of the beautiful things about being a Klingon and, and playing Cole and Cole Shaw and Tanavik is mm -hmm. having all this wonderful, unique dialogue. And, um, you know, people just want to hear it. And I'm happy to share it on stage. Um, you know, so I guess part of my shtick when I am on a panel is that I can, you know, lay out a couple of lines in Klingon. Um, and uh, I watch the audience enjoying it, and that makes me happy. I mean, I worked so damn hard memorizing those lines. I, <laughs> might, as well... <laughs> yeah. I might as well keep saying it up forever. Yeah. I did. I I was going to ask you about that because that just sounds baffling. Like when they cast you, did they say, "Okay, but before we shoot anything, we need to take teach you like you know three months of Klingon real quick." I mean, I got to be honest with you, no. I mean, they really lucked out that, you know, Mary, myself, Shazad, yeah. you know, we were really game to give it our all and, and go for it and dig dig in and, and learn this stuff um, as best we can to do the show justice and uh, cling on culture justice. But it was incredibly hard. and. Um, I, you know, I feel like a lot of people would have given up or just not taken it as seriously, but they were kind of, I guess, lucky that they found three people that were willing to go for it and spend the hours, multiple hours. It would take me about eight hours a day for two weeks straight to memorize two scenes of dialogue. I mean, if it's in English, we can learn two scenes of dialogue and you know, a couple of hours. Mm -hmm. So it was a big commitment as far as um, learning this stuff. I would type out all the phonetic dialogue on back in my computer and print it up on big giant sheets of paper and po post it all over my house. Nice. Um, I mean, my, my, the walls of my house looked like the matrix. It was, it was pretty funny. Um, and my <laughs> family thought it was crazy. But after a while, you know, my kids started saying this stuff along with me. <laughs> it became a bit of a family project. Um, Were you still I'm the best? I'm incredibly proud of, of what we accomplished. Um, that being said, I was super relieved and happy when they introduced or reintroduced the Universal Translator in episode eight. <laughs> <laughs> <Yeah. laughs> <laughs> oh, yeah. oh man i can only imagine having to learn a whole other language yeah you know that's just so much yeah um, it's not it's not just a whole other language like if it was spanish or french or something you know you you know a few words or you've heard it before mm -hmm. but it was it was memorizing all every single syllable so even if one word had five syllables, you know, I have to go syllable by syllable by syllable trying to memorize that. And at the end of the day, I mean, it was, <laughs> it was incredibly hard to stick it in my brain. Right. Um, and then on the day when you're shooting, there's no rest. Like I always constantly had to stay 
in the moment, going over the lines. There wasn't a lot of joking around, unfortunately, during that time. Um, it was just focus, 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 so I could get this stuff out and, and you know, do, do it justice. Uh, Mar- Marriott and Shazad had slightly different approaches. Like, Shazad has a photographic memory, so... Um, Lucky. And, and he also speaks like four or five different languages. So the the Klingon dialogue came a little bit easier to him, quicker. I'm not saying it was, wasn't was hard, but um, it was just different for him. And then Mary, you know, she comes from Juilliard and she's been straight, straight out of Juilliard and working on plays and that that part of her brain is just going all the time. So she had a different approach and found it, probably a little bit easier than I did too. I was just grinding away, man, just <laughs> grinding away. But, syllable uh, by syllable. I know, man. <laughs> but uh, once you're there on set uh, saying this stuff, that no one else, like none of the crew know, knew what the hell we were talking about. <laughs> but um, it kind of was like an opera. Um, mm. You're saying this stuff and there's intentions and emotions and meaning. Um, uh, uh, and it just became this operatic dance. And it was really beautiful, I thought, you know, when it when it clicked, when it worked. You know, you say that people didn't know what you guys were saying on set. Did they have a Klingon expert on set while you were shooting, just in case you got one of the lines wrong? <laughs> so that they could say, ah, 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 you said that wrong. Or could you just say pretty much anything and nobody would know? Hell no. Yeah, no. <laughs> so there was, wasn't a Klingon expert. So the Klingon expert, um, she was offset and she was the one that would interpret uh, the script and send us the Klingon uh, files, both in audio and in the, in the script form. Um, but there was, a, we had a, a Rhea who was on set and she was the one that would come up to us in between each take and um um she would make herself well versed in the scene by scene that we were working on and she would you know come up in between takes and tell us you know can you need to go <laughs> rather than <laughs> and you're like oh god okay okay yeah well for, i'm doing it i'm doing it you know, you just always had to say, all right, all right, you know, you're right, you're right. I got to get this right. Uh, you know, it's it's for the betterment of the show. Yeah. Yeah, well, the... But there were times where I was just like, come on, man. Just let me, let me say <laughs> rather than... <laughs> <laughs> I mean, let it slide. Yeah, yeah. Only like three people are going to know. I, mean, I don't know. Melissa, but, do you uh, think you a know, lot of God, people God bless Rhea. She was an instrumental part in in uh in the team and getting this right so um you know it really all these things as you guys know it's a team effort you know it's not one person that's uh providing the end product um and even in the editing room think about the editors right they don't speak klingon so all of a sudden they have these scenes and they're supposed to try to cut them together and they have no idea what the hell is going on so it was just like back and forth back and forth between all these different departments trying to get it right. Mm. Uh, And there were, there were times where, um, where, you know, the day before about to shoot, unfortunately, you have to rewrite some of the scenes. Well, I had been working on that scene for two weeks, memorizing it and you can't just all of a sudden pick it up. So there were a couple of times where we had to use cue cards I mean, I hate to admit it, but it was just, that's what we had to do. So they would, you know, print it out on um, big, bold lettering and, and hide it behind the camera. Thankfully, at that time, we were able to read Klingon phonetically. Like, I could read it and say the words so it could come out naturalistic. But, mm-hmm. um, yeah, at times it was a pretty chaotic process, but, you know, we got through it. There, there was this one time where um, they they switched the scene on us the day of, and we're like, I you know, 
sorry, we, we need cue cards. I'm like, no problem. We'll have them ready. Okay. Are you sure? Yeah, no problem. So Uh-oh. can you make sure that everyone knows I'm like, okay, no problem. And uh, it was a scene where Cole was uh, on the sarcophagus and he was addressing these um, giant holograph or uh, um, uh, Klingons that, that mm. he was talking to from other ships. And um, so it was a big giant scale. Like they, you, when you're doing the master, it's in the, if you know the set of the sarcophagus, it's, it's, it's huge. Right. So it's, it's a big shot. So you think about, well, where are you going to hide these cue cards? Like, they're like well, don't worry about it Ken we'll do it so I get to set and I'm I'm sitting up on the on the podium and they're like all right Ken uh we're I got the shot set up in a side master you're addressing these guys the island's up there all right let's go I'm like okay well, where are the you guards and they're like he, the director was like what are you talking about I was like fuck man <laughs> So <laughs> he's like, well, just say say anything. Don't worry about it. Just say it in English. It's a wide shot. I'm like, are you sure, Ben? Um, yeah. So I started saying the stuff in English, and <laughs> obviously it didn't work. So he gets this idea. He goes, I'll be back in 10 minutes. The director just leaves the set. He comes back with his projector one of those um, Bluetooth projectors. He Mm. takes a picture of the tiny little uh, cue cards. He downloads it into the projector. He sets up the projector and he projects it in the back of the sarcophagus. About 40 feet high is my dialogue. I can see it clear as day. Like, holy fuck, there it is. Okay. (laughs) And I'm like, why do we do this all the time? <laughs> what? what? Uh, I don't need to spend two weeks memorizing this. No, and see? <laughs> Just protect yeah. it. And you guys had long Klingon scenes at first. So when you say I had to memorize a scene, this was like pages of dialogue. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, wow. yeah. pages of dialogue. I, like I said, the Matrix. It was crazy, but we got through it, and and I was so proud of what everyone accomplished, and um, it's there. It's there and ingrained in, in uh, film, television, history. But again, thank God for the universal translator. <laughs> I, I wanted to ask you, Kenneth, about uh, this rave that uh, one of our producers, Homer, keeps talking yeah. about. He says that he was on the cruise and that uh, you had like a party. Can you tell us about it? Yeah. Melissa was there too, right, Melissa? On the cruise. I don't know, Melissa, is it what happens on the cruise stays on the cruise? (laughs) (laughs) Oh, you can't talk about it. Okay. No, man, it was, um, we, we hosted this party a year ago on the, on the other cruise. Um, I came on the cruise with my three best friends. <clears throat> um, the, fir- the the year pr- prior, they came with me because I had recently been diagnosed and I just felt like I needed the support because my news wasn't public at that time. Um, so it just was nice to have the support and people to help me out while I was there because, um, you know, the, these as you know conventions and specifically the cruise it's a lot of work like you're constantly on you're uh, amongst the fans and um you know i'm i'm one who likes to be amongst the people and and interact and have fun with them so there's you know this constant energy that you're giving off and and it's not easy but you know it's incredibly fun and one of the things you need to do for the cruise is you need to provide about two hours of programming. And I thought to myself, like, what can I offer? What can I offer? And the first thing that we 
um, came up with was a tennis match because I was a, a great tennis player in my day. And I also used to play tennis with Jason Isaacs. And we okay. thought, oh, why don't we uh, play tennis for the crowd? Um, so that was like our big event that we had set up uh, for the crews. Um, I guess I'll go on. I'll tell that story first before I get to the party. Um, so when we got to the court, I was a little worried about what I can handle physically, given my illness and my condition, because um, my legs were at the time were starting to get a little weak and my uh, left hand was weak, but I still had a super strong right arm. And I thought, oh, I can still hit the ball, serve, I'll be fine. But let me go a little early and warm up and uh, see how things, uh, where, where we're at. Mm -hmm. So I, I get to the court with Jason, we start hitting the ball. And immediately, I noticed like I couldn't take two steps before my legs gave out. And I was like, and then I, I was like, go up to the front of the court or sorry, to the net. I'm like, Jason, I don't know if I can do this, but it was like, it was too late. Like hundreds of people started coming into the stands. They're miking us up. Like this thing was happening. My, and my emotions and my mind was imploding in real time. Like I thought, oh my God, I can't believe I'm going to expose myself like this um, okay. in, in real time. I was actually quite uh, unnerved or nervous at the time. Um, but then Jason's like, look, why don't we play doubles? And I was like, that's a great idea. But so uh, that's when. Uh, we got Worf to play. Nice. And he's a, uh, Michael Dorn's a great tennis player. And he's like, yeah, absolutely. I'm in. So we ended up playing Klingons against Federation. Uh, with the two of us, we were able to cover the court a lot better. It wasn't perfect. Like I missed shots that I probably should have gotten, but we just hammed it up for the crowd and, my serve was on point, and my forehand was was wicked. So, it it, it was all good. <laughs> and the lesson there is, <clears throat> you know, here I was on the back of a cruise ship, Star Trek cruise ship. The sun is setting. I'm playing tennis with Jason Isaacs and Michael Dorn, and in front of a gracious crowd. I mean, it was a magical moment for me, and um, I'll never forget it. I'll never forget it. <clears throat> and then cut to the next time yeah. you're crowd surfing. <laughs> right? and, and yeah. we, we see pictures of you on your back just living it up with everybody carrying you around. So the, how that all came about was, um, again, I, I felt like I wanted to – give give what all i could give for for this cruise and i kept thinking what more can i do um that is in my wheelhouse and my, i realized that, that my three best friends that were with me they're all amazing djs and the one of the things that we share in common is we um love to listen to djs and um and you know enjoy a good time dancing so I thought, why don't I host a party? I don't need a DJ, but those guys can. I can just be the host. Um, so we pitched it, and they they ended up saying yes. Um, they already had a party on the program, so they just booted out the resident DJ and let us come in and do it. Um, and, you know, we just went for it. We made flyers, T-shirts. Uh, we gave it a theme. Uh, we decided that all the guests, when they came in, that they would uh, be welcomed into the House of Core, and we'd nice. paint their face with the red uh, markings. Mm -hmm. um, and at, before the event, we're like, well, you know, if 10 people show up, that's okay. You know, we'll, we'll make that in the night great for those 10 people. Um, but it ended up being... 
like one of the favorite nights of my life. Like mm. there was hundreds and hundreds of people showed up. Everyone wanted their face painted. And a lot of people there left saying, you know, that for them, that was one of the funnest nights of their life. Um, so I was incredibly uh, happy to provide that evening for, for everyone. But it was equally joyful and um, important for me than it was for them. Now, cut to uh, the next year, the the cruise people wanted to do the party again. So, um, or like hell yeah, like uh, uh, so I <laughs> I invited the same three guys. Um, and we just thought, well, do we need to do anything different? And we thought, not really, just let's just, you know, keep with the program. Um, I did have a new character at the time. So Mm -hmm. I had played Cole, Cole Shaw and Mm Tanavik. And so I thought, well, let's, you know, start off the evening down and dirty with, Cole and Cole Shaw, and then you know halfway through the evening, uh, switching over to more of a um, enlightening chapter of the of the party, and make it about time and time crystals. And then I thought I just had this image of um, and also a, a bucket list item of crowd serving. So I had this image of everyone holding up time crystals and me crowd surfing in a sea of time crystals. I I don't know. I didn't know how the fuck we were going to execute it, but (laughs) that was just my image. And so the, the party is unfolding and the time crystals get handed out, which are really just glow sticks. And I addressed the crowd and I said, I have this dream, this image that I want to execute. Can you guys help me? And obviously everyone's like, hell yeah. And so we, you know, we queued up the music. Um, And I went over to the side of the, the dance floor. A couple guys hoist me up and all of a sudden I'm just floating in a sea of hands uh, and I'm elated. And the theme song to discovery is playing. Nice. And I'm like, and, um, and I thought that those same people that hoist me up would just take me to the center of the dance floor and surround me with the time crystals and that would be that. But all of a sudden, my body starts moving, like floating, like a centipede. And I realized, like, this is happening. Like, I'm actually crowd surfing in a sea of hundreds of people <laughs> surrounded by all these beautiful uh, time crystals. And, I mean, the energy and the support and the love was beyond measure. I, I, it was something I will never forget. And I think the people that were at the party, it's something that, uh, you know, resonated in their heart too. Mm. The it's funny, image, the funny thing is about too. it, the funny thing about it is that um, <clears throat> we never had an exit plan. So... <laughs> Once I was up there, like everyone's like, uh, how the fuck did we get up down? So, um, you know, thankfully there was a bunch of crew and, and my boys and, and directed them back to the stage. And I finally got on stage and it kind of felt like I had just had sex three times. Like it was <laughs> like, it was unbelievable. The feeling. What? Am I not allowed uh, to say that? No, the three times is what we, <laughs> <laughs> I've just added to it. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Uh, 
Um, uh, yeah, man. The and I look back on the pictures, and it's pretty sick what happened. That's mm-hmm. for sure. No, and then like, you cut cut to two weeks later. We're in a, a lockdown pen, pandemic, and right. it's just crazy to think that I had that experience of all of these hands touching me in like this Seth pool of of germs. But it didn't matter. Like it was all about love and support, and no one got sick. So, mm. um, you know, we were quite lucky. But it's amazing the juxtaposition about where we are right now and and where we were at the beginning of March on that cruise. I mean, sure. we we were incredibly lucky to be able to have that experience. Yeah, very lucky. Hey, uh, we're actually just about uh, we're actually a little bit over time here, but we really enjoy hearing all of these stories and you're painting these <laughs> pictures. That honestly, I know we're going to remember this for the rest of our lives too. Uh, but before we go, there, there's one question that everybody's always asking, whether directly or indirectly. They always want to know, uh, Kenneth, you know, what can we do to help? Like, how? just tell us anything we can do to help, and everybody will do everything in their power. Whatever it is, is there a website we can go to? Is there, you know, something we can do? Uh, as far as ALS, yeah. As far as the ALS, or or you yourself, anything, anything that we can do. Well, I, I mean, I feel like I'm getting so much out of this family um, that you know, I don't, I don't really want to ask for anything more. But if you want to, you know, continue to educate yourself, you can always go to the ALS Association and uh, learn more about. ALS. The, mm-hmm. the one thing that's happening that's unfortunate is, I mean, as you guys may or may not know, it's, it's a fatal disease. There's, you know, um, it's terminal. Most people live about five years <clears throat> and there's no cure. And, you know, people are working tirelessly to try to f- find a cure. Um, but there are lots of treatments out there. And unfortunately, a lot of the treatments are still caught up in um, trials. Mm-hmm. And, um, and, you know, it's, I think it's unfortunate that, you know, people aren't given a chance um, and they're making these treatments available when they already know that a lot of them are uh, positive and successful. So, I mean, I suppose that's something to be able to spread the word around is just, mm-hmm. you know, continue to, to bug the government um, to you know, try to get them to uh, approve some of these drugs, and you know what's happening right now with with the COVID virus. You know we're we're fast tracking a lot of this testing and mm-hmm. making stuff, trying to make stuff available in a short period of time. So it is possible, like, and that's what needs to happen too for diseases like ALS. We need a faster turnaround. Um, in attacking the problem and that goes for both treatment and for trying to find a cure absolutely that's a really good point um because here we are the, the world is all uniting trying to find this cure treatment or vaccine for COVID 19 yeah. that's something we should be doing for als as well uh, yes wholeheartedly mm. i mean not as there you know there's about 20,000 people uh, plus in the United States that have ALS. So the numbers are different, you know, than something like COVID-19, but all 20 of those thousand people are going to die. So it's it's a little different situation. Whereas, you know, you get COVID-19, it's not guaranteed that you're going to die. When I first heard the news, Kenneth, I, I couldn't think that this couldn't happen to any greater guy than you. And I got to learn more about you. Like, you know, the fact that you're a family man, that you're a father, that you're a husband, and that just multiplied on top of the fact that just me knowing you as a good person. And uh, you've been supportive of, you know, you were there for the release of the DS9 documentary. I remember right. the Man's Chinese Theater. We took a photo together, me, you, and uh, Aaron and Melissa. And, 
we're all there. And, uh, you know, my prayers are with you. My heart's with you. And just, you know, just know that we, we really, we really love you, man, as, as a human being. Thank you so much. I, I feel that love very much. Very much, and I'm, you know, I'm proud of proud of you guys, <clears throat> and how you've uh, continued on with your show and continue to spread, you know, what everything that Aaron meant to this world, um, and I'll try to continue to do that myself because uh, you know he was is an incredible human being. And he's <laughs> he did speak very highly of you, uh, Kenneth. He would always, you know, be like, "Have you met Kenneth yet? Ah, oh, you got to meet Kenneth. You're gonna love. Oh, he's yeah. so great. You know, you know, Kenneth is coming to the the Deep Space Nine documentary premiere. You got to meet him. He's a great. Ah, oh, you're gonna love him. He's so cool. So, I think." Whatever it is that you're you're thinking about him, it sounds like he thought of you too, yeah. very highly. I'm sure Melissa can vouch for that. I, I can definitely vouch for that. It's a hundred percent on the nose. <laughs> like, uh, <laughs> he was crazy about you, and and uh, he was so excited when you when he heard you were coming to do the DS nine doc screening. So yeah. that meant a lot to him, and. Um, to feel that support and I know that if he were here he would do everything he could to support you in your journey what you're going through right now as well and because yeah it, it's the love that he gave out and then that you give out and we all feel it and it yeah we love you and it, it's that yeah your your family <laughs> yeah i i will emulate that it, we are family i just think it's a great place for us to end is it's all about family a star trek family mm -hmm. um through and through <clears throat> it's a beautiful beautiful family and i'm you know really blessed to be a part of it absolutely uh kenneth yeah, uh, you're right. That is the perfect place to end because Star Trek is absolutely a family. And no matter how much people think it's a family, they never fully realize it until they're immersed in it. As I'm sure you really soaked it in on your and your first convention, you saw how supportive everybody was. And and we do love you. We love your story. We love everything that you're telling us today. Uh, and we really appreciate you taking the time for us um, just to talk and share your thoughts. Um, we're looking forward to sharing this with the fans because I'm sure it's going to touch them as much as it touched us. And uh, just and we're praying for you, we're cheering for you, we're rooting for you, and thank uh, you. And, and we want you to keep us updated on whatever it is that you're doing that we can also be a part of, and join, and support. Uh, Absolutely. Whether, you, whether you're going to start a foundation or you just want to, you know, shed light on one particular aspect of what you're doing. So. Mm. Just keep us informed and keep us, keep us updated. And, you know. Maybe we can do a shoe line. <laughs> <laughs> exactly. <laughs> exactly. Oh, man. I love it. I love Instead it. of the Cisco <laughs> kid, it'll be the Cisco yeah. kicks. Right? <laughs> yeah. Cisco. Cisco. Oh, Cisco. Well, I, did, I didn't realize how much you were into the shoes, man. But I'm glad you, I'm glad you uh, shoe game. <laughs> I, I'm, it's not that I'm so much into shoes. I'm so much into your shoes. <laughs> no, I remember you having nice. I remember you having nice shoes at the documentary. I remember those pictures. Actually, I did notice them. You don't don't pretend. You do you do pay attention to shoes. Sometimes. Well, I had to step up my game. <laughs> <laughs> uh, that's so All right. Funny. Thank well, you, thanks man. very much. Uh, we really thank appreciate you guys. Sis Cole. That's what it's going to be called. <laughs> uh, yeah, we really appreciate it. And um, all the best to you, Kenneth. We hope to see you soon. Uh, and for those of you at home, uh, go to the ALS Foundation, educate yourself, donate, do whatever you can, spread the word, share it around. Um, you know what to do. 
you're like in Star Trek people, fans are like an army. They'll mobilize and they'll make a movement happen. 